with a bass. I have really been through the smorgasbord of fish today. We are about to take home these fish and see which is the best, which is the best freshwater species to eat. This lake still confuses me a little bit. It's got spurts of greatness and then there's just this barrenness. It's hard to get over and uh, I've had a hard time locating any kind of good shallow bite which is confusing to me it looks so good up there oh my god on the point massive bass blast oh that's not a terrible cast either oh that was not a tiny one no sir that was full grown one just tried to eat it just tried to eat it Oh gosh, what the heck is going on? They just won't eat good. <sighs> Can't get them, I'm trying everything. I'm trying my darndest on the bass. Tiny guys, I just don't know. Besides that one fish just a second ago that was blowing up, that was an actual good one. Oh, hey, what do we got here? Another tiny? Yes, another tiny explosion. This lake is just full of the brown ones. Alrighty, get bigger. Y'all get bigger, dang it. I wish there was a big old sow belly on it just to finish out the day. We've got our food. I just want a big bite. Oh, one behind it. Oh, that was a little, a little sassier one there. True story, I once watched a smallmouth try to eat a white bass, like a fully grown white bass. You just think eventually one of these would be like a two pounder. The 10 incher army is strong here. Oh, hey now, what's up? Oh, there's a good one. Hey, welcome to the show. Watch that fish come up. Here we go now. A little better smally. Ah, <laughs> 14 incher. That sound right there was awesome. I actually watched that fish boil out there in that calm water and you just blah blah this is the sweet sound of explosions oh. smallest smallmouth of the day is still gonna stiff him all the way because I love him made it back to
handsome. I'm more of a outdoor kind of guy. It's not a true golden crispy unless it's outside. If you do an indoor kitchen, it's, it's half a crispy. So I've got a uh, prototype mix here of a uh, lemon pepper batter that we're going to use. Ridiculous looking fish glove for safety. I did manage to uh, get the cheek pieces out. So the cheek pieces, that's a very, very tender delicacy. So it's a small nugget out of, out of those fish. But um, the white bass too, I kept a couple of those. You can definitely tell they're a little bit more red. Not as pristine as our pure white meat friends here. So let's get some batter on them. Just throw them in the grease. Walleye and crappie fillets mixed, mixed together. Roll them around. Not, oh my gosh, it's really strong. It's covered really well though. We're just going with our 10 inch uh, camp pan here today. Since we're not doing too much. Another crappie and walleye. Woo! That's perfect. That's perfect for doing four fillets right there that size. Number one of the keys to look for if your fish is done. Number one, golden. Is it golden? Is it golden crispy? When they start to float, that's when I like to take them out. I'm gonna take the walleye out last because it's just a little beefier. While those are cooling off, I'm just gonna dust around this cheek piece. And try it as well. That should cook up really quick. It's time we determine what is the greatest tasting freshwater fish of all time. I think when it really comes down to it, if everyone were to take a poll, all the danglers across the US, it would be the walleye and the crappie as the top two. Delicious, flaky meat, both of them. The walleye, normally colder water, lives deeper, but both of these were caught very deep. Same conditions, same day, same fryer. So now we can really know. First up, let's try my old favorite, the crappie. Break a piece off, see the flakiness, oh. Wow, these are cooked. Okay. We did these right. My dad would be proud. Shout out to LFD. Same batter, let's go in for a flavor check. Wow. The texture of a crappie seems unbeatable to me. It was absolutely fantastic, y'all. They're they're almost like uh, like creamy. They're so soft. Their flesh is so soft. And what I love to do is put them in a cooler, let them chill overnight at least. Don't freeze them and cook them up the next day. It's so incredible. Oh, next up, the great and powerful walleye. Let's break it for flakiness, crispiness. <gasps> Breaks apart super easy, but the bigger flakes inside. This is this is what I'm interested in. The meat breaks down in smaller little flakes with the crappie. With the walleye, it's it's bigger chunks. Let's see what we got. Oh, oh, it melts. It melts in your mouth. I'm gonna have to go for another taste. Oh my goodness, y'all. I wish you were here to taste it. It's absolutely phenomenal. Look at that deliciously cooked piece. Holy moly. I'm literally slapping my knee. I think that's gonna take the win, y'all. Eating them at the exact same time, same conditions, everything across the board. The walleye takes the cake. Holy cow, let me just try this cheek piece right here. This is the delicacy. Overcooked, but still amazing. That is it, I am gonna have to get back out and try to target these guys. That completes today's video. I hope y'all enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe right here to the channel so you don't miss every single day in the outdoors. Love you guys. I will see you right back here on the next one. Hashtag no ketchup needed. Mm. That was incredible. 
Somebody get me a cold adult Abner right now. This is amazing.